questions for Coach McCartney. Coach, just your overall feelings on how the uh, film turned out. I was uh, thrilled with the way it turned out because they asked me a lot more questions than showed up on the screen. <laughs> and, you know, I I am, had enough controversy, you know. So I was, I thought they really did a good job of balancing what faith in football. Was, was there anything else you were that you were hoping would be portrayed more? In the Not really. Period? You know, in, in all fairness, I didn't know what they were going to say. You know, I didn't have any preparation for this is what we're going to talk about. It was it was wide open, and I didn't know because they're coming from out of town. I didn't know where they were coming from. You know, so when it was over, I, I was relieved. Bring back a lot of memories for you watching. It, it does. It does. Uh, you know, uh, having been here, uh, this place is amazing. Boulder, there's, you know, the best kept secret all across college football is Boulder, Colorado. I mean, honestly, it, this is as good as it gets. And coaching at Michigan and then in that big stadium and being in the Big Ten and then coming here, that's when I learned that. I, when I played at Missouri, we came here and played one time. So I remember as a young player being taken back by the beauty of Boulder. But coming here and coaching here, I came to discover, realize, and understand this is as good as it gets. College football, this is, this is really special. Coach, one of the things that stood out to me when I watched it was the clear kind of love and admiration your former players have for you still now as adults. Uh, what did that mean for you to, to kind of revisit that and see them as grown men and, and still have that uh, you know kind of admiration for what you did for them? Yeah, you know, uh, when you get out of coaching, you get disconnected. And, and so I hadn't seen those guys for the most part. And I didn't know what was in their hearts. So when they came to my house that day, I, you know, I was ready for anything. And it really uh, blessed me uh, to hear the way they look back. Because the truth of the matter is, when I was coaching here, I was demanding. I didn't take any. I came from Bo Schimbecker. Schimbecker won more games in a 20-year stretch and any coach in all of college football. I was with him for eight and a half years. He was a disciplinarian. He was a Woody Hayes disciple. And so when I came here, pardon me, when I came here, that's who I was. And so for the players to adjust to that, because they don't get that in high school, and then look back on it the way they did, that that really surprised me. And it really encouraged me. Coach, in the film, you made it seem like recruiting Boulder is as simple as just selling Boulder. Is it really, really that get them, simple? Get them uh, to fly into Denver and then come on that drive and then that about a mile out when you overlook, just stop there. I used to pull the car over there and I would get them out of the car and I'd say, look down there, is that an oasis? Does it get any better than this? You know, and then when they came down, they, you know, they, they felt like they were coming in on a place and when I was in the home, you know, first you got to try to get them to visit. Because many of them were from out of state. California and Texas is where we... So they didn't know what was in Boulder. It's not, it's not widely publicized what's in Boulder. But once you show them Boulder and you say, now look, the next four or five years out of your life, you're going to lay a foundation that's going to be a springboard to the rest of your life. Is this not the place to launch? You know what I mean? And, and, and I mean, that's what I, I believed and that's what I sold. And, and, you know, during the time that I was here, we ended up having the best players, not the best coaches. We were able to recruit the caliber of athlete here where we could line up with anybody and look them in the eye. Anybody. The Notre Dames and the Nebraskas and the Oklahomas. Remember, back in that day, Oklahoma and Nebraska were two of the top five programs in the country. Switzer and Osborne, they're, they're legendary. We could look them right in the eye. Well, we, that didn't happen right away, but Boulder did that. Being in Boulder did that. And it, sh and it should still do it. Coach, I know you, you want to be careful with, with another coach you know, judging or, or talking about another What have you seen in Coach McIntyre? The difficulty of the rebuilding program that he 
was given and where they are now in that progression. Oh, what Coach McIntyre is going through, I went through. My first three years, we won seven games. We had to start over. When you keep turning over coaches, what people don't realize, what the media doesn't realize, in my opinion, is you have to start over. You don't have any, let's say I come into your home and recruit your son and I tell you the, the plans that we have for him and then they fire me. What does that do to that kid and that family? They don't know who to trust. It's all about trust because you get these kids to play as hard as they can for 60 minutes. That takes trust. That takes a bond. That takes a, a commitment, a resolve that you don't just step into that. When kids are in high school, almost always, they don't play at the pace that you need to play at to win here. So you gotta, you gotta uh, develop that. And when you keep turning over coaches, you undermine it. Yeah, I, I honestly don't believe people understand what happens when you change coaches. Having said that, I think we got the right guy. Just stick with him, believe in him, and and watch. Because I, what I see in him is a really fine man who's a man of his word and who loves football. He comes from a football family. So I'm, I'm ready to take our time and let this thing get built the right way. And then I think in the Pac-12, we can be competitive for the foreseeable future. But right now, we're building something. So the reaction from the players has been over, overwhelmingly positive when um, they changed their uniforms to the classic uniforms this weekend. What does that mean for you with that? That, that really encourages me. You know, I'm 75. People that know me well call me over the hill Bill. Okay? I mean, I'm toast. And so, I, when you go in and you talk to a team, uh, these kids are between the ages of 18 and 22. You hope that you can still connect, that you can still relate, that they don't say, get that old guy out of here, you know? And so, uh, I, it encourages me that they are wearing a uniform today that they weren't normally gonna wear today, and that they they kind of have, have a resolve about this. I was hoping to get them to do that because this team we're playing today is really good. And if, we, if we're going to have a, you know, this team can still go to a bowl game, but they got to win this game today. Then you can make a case for them going to a bowl game, but they got to win this game today. This game is big today. This is the biggest game of the season. They have not played a game of this importance yet. In my opinion. My grandson Derek, he hung the moon. Okay? He studied to be a doctor. He's humble, he's gracious, he's a great kid, he's a team player, he loves being a buffalo. All those things are just a, a treat for me to watch this unfold. I, I just think Derek is a dynamo. You heard from any knowledgeable Nebraska fans about what that end stands for? <laughs> well, let's just say we, as far as Nebraska is concerned, we just we don't play them anymore, so we sold. Anything else for Coach McCarthy? Thanks, Coach. Okay. Thank you.